Perennial flooding, which has been a menace in Abaraje community in Ikotun, Igon, the local council development area of Lagos State, may soon be a thing of the past as the state government commences the dredging and expansion of Potoku Canal, a major water outlet that runs through several communities. An eyewitness video of a flood taking shortly after a brief downpour speaks more of the large amount of water that overflows the street whenever it rains in Abaranje, a suburban wetland community in the Kotumi Godo local council development area of Lagos State. The aftermath of heavy downpour results to an overflow that runs into homes and other properties. Water marks on the wall show that houses without high or solid foundations are mostly affected. This year now, just the first minor rains that fell, almost every community around here were on the run. So we were afraid that if by the time the full rainy season will come on, almost nobody will be living around here. We have experienced lots of life here. I think that was in 2000 and. Uh, 2012, 2012, June precisely, uh, one, one man uh, named Akim, you know, it was exactly in the other point where you stand the other time that he's trying to remove one of his belongings that is being taken by the flood. Before he knew it, what has sweep him uh, away and nobody is able to rescue him. Uh, I think after two days, when the water go down, uh, subsided, and is the um, fire brigade the officers that came and uh, they searched for him and they found the dead body somewhere around up there, you know, and some other things like that. We have lost a lot of things, our properties and uh, our belongings, a lot of them has been damaged by the flood water. Wall fortifications and wooden bridges linked to houses are some of the steps taken by residents to stay safe from perennial flooding during the rainy season. These efforts last shortly because the section of Potoku Canal, which runs through the community, is narrow and shallow, unable to convey the large volume of rainwater from secondary channels from other areas. We really need uh, a permanent solution that will help us a lot. That is by first and foremost expanding the canal and uh, deepening it and most importantly sliding, slabbing it. The slabbing will bring the permanent solution to it. And the opening where it enters, it, it joins with the Abada Red River, that is where the major problem is. As I'm talking to you now, that place is totally blocked up. Blocked that as soon as the water reach, uh, hits there, it starts flowing back. It's not the canal even itself, it's the flowing back of the water, the flood, that comes from other channels that connected the canal, is what the pro major problem is. The blockade is further worsened by water hyacinth on a path and waste washed from other parts of the state. After years of cry from residents of the area, dredging equipment is now deployed to the canal. This is the intervention residents have longed for for years to ease the pain and discomfort brought about by flooding whenever it rains and they can't hide their joy. Be 
Even with the ongoing clearing of the canal, the wooden shanty is sited close to its path. It's a church building. The owner of the structure claimed to have observed the required setback, not minding its exposure to flood and dangerous animals. Where do I go? I'm being called by God, and this is the house of God. I don't have any other place. If I should leave my church and go to another place, then what, what will I tell God? So I cannot leave the place for the water. But so I will keep on praying. I'll just keep on praying that God one day will visit this area, and which he has done. So we appreciate God, and we appreciate our governor also. When we got to this place, when we were buying the land, they gave us the specimens of this place, the survey plan of the place, and they measured my land that I should leave at least 35 feet to the canal, which was what I did. The excavator is not only clearing the water channel, it's also expanding it from what used to be 15 meters to as wide as 30 meters. Since they have been packing this canal like this, it's not wide, it's not as wide as like this, as they package. At least it will be taku temporarily. But we are still begging our governor that uh, uh, maybe very near or maybe in future, they will come here to come, to come and help us put uh, all these uh, slabs. If they put the slabs, I think slabs will be the permanent uh, measure for the work. If they can be able to put all the plank so that the water will be flowed. However, residents claim that the dredging of the canal has reportedly suffered intermittent breaks since it commenced in the early days of August and the fear the project may be abandoned as the rains intensify. For some years that we've been here, this place, if they come to park it, let's say three, four years ago, they'll just park the top of the canal and go. Then by six, three years now, they've not parked this place at all. You can even walk on top of the canal. And the work they are doing now is a very great job. But we want to plead with the people consigned to help us as they've started it to finish it. Because we can send some delays, you understand, in the job. There are times, two weeks, you will see the tractor just packed. We'll be asking questions. Nobody to give us answer to what is going on. This fear is, however, allayed by the special advisor to the Lagos State Governor on drainage services, Mr. Joe Ibukwe. When you are given a job, you are paid 40% or 60% of the entire um, worth of the project. You know, when you get halfway, or probably to the quarter, if you get 60%, they come back and take the balance and finish up the job. So perhaps the money finished because of cost of high cost of materials. You can they are unpredictable now. It can go up. Things go prices of things are going up. We don't know why. So it's affecting them. So probably they waited for the they stopped and waited for their second payment and got it and went back to site. We went there. We went there. Because somebody around there told me that they went downstream. Because sometimes if you are constructing you know, if you are doing construction or dredging, sometimes if you dredge and it's not moving, you have to go and find, you have to go and locate where it's being blocked and, and you deal with it and then it will continue to flow. So they're working and we have monitoring team, monitoring the evaluation team goes. That's what our engineers do here. Occasionally they go to science and report back to us for our meetings because we, 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 we check, we give you a job, we follow you for monitoring and evaluation to make sure it's delivered. So if you don't see them on site, maybe it's something. But, but you know, people are always apprehensive. If they can't find them, you cannot see their bulldozer. Ah, they say, these people abandon the job. Oh, no, you can't. We give you money, we follow you. In some systems, in some canals, when you go to work today, tomorrow, if, you, if it rains, if you go there, you won't believe that something has been done there because of our attitude on issues of waste disposal. People still go to dump something in the canal. Then encroachment on the setbacks, see that things are giving us issues. People go to build houses there where we are supposed to put our bulldozer and evacuate and trucks will come there and take it away. 
And again, some people are living where they're not supposed to live, low-lying areas, agility. In some, some areas in Ketu there. Jorabadia. So they are wetlands. So the access rivers, reservoirs, wetlands does a lot of things. You can do agriculture there, you can do so many things there. You use it to preserve the ecosystem. Residents are also mindful about the scope of the dredging, its durability and sustainability. The problem we used to have on this canal is that they have been doing it several times, but when it gets to that canal, Badore Bridge, there is another big water that is called Owa River that the water is discharging into. So at that point, there is a stone that is blocking the water from flowing. So it only drops little by little. So at that point, once it rains and the water is coming with full force, so the, the stones will push the water back. The water will not be able to discharge into the main river. So and we will really appreciate if this work that is going on now, the government can make the block, the blockage to be true so that the water will be able to discharge freely to the Owa River. The 8-kilometer Potoko Canal is one of the longest in Lagos State and serves as a primary collector from communities in Ikotsu Ingodo in Alimosho, Amuwo Dofi and Ojo local government areas of the state. The intervention is expected to stem the destruction of lives and property occasioned by flooding. Your mobile phone and other communication devices could be used to bring positive changes to your community. Just take a short video or pictures of happenings around you. Upload them to our portal via the Channels TV app with a bit of information to help us develop your story. You can download the app from the various app stores online. It's time to see some of the images you sent in for the week. Our God, we are calling your attention. Please, come and help us. This video sent in by an eyewitness reporter shows the bad condition of Mowe of Fada Road in Obafemi Owode local government area of Ugun State. Every space on the road is covered by flood after a recent rainfall, making it impossible for motorists and pedestrians to go through. The reporter says contracts for the reconstruction of the 8-kilometer dual carriageway, which was awarded by the immediate past administration of Governor Ibukunle Amosun in 2013, has since been abandoned. He says despite several promises made by the present administration to continue the work, nothing has been done. Contractors are yet to return to complete the work. We need your assistance, please. Welcome back. At least 10 families living in Umuchima community along the Olu Akokwauga Federal Highway in Idiato South local government area of Imo State are homeless after a landslide caused damages to houses and other properties. Images of large gullies represent the extent of damage brought about by erosion in Umuchima, an agrarian community in Idiato South local government area of Imo State. The federal road linking Olu and Okokwa in the state and Uga in Anambra state has been ravaged by landslide with a 20 feet deep cut on one side of the draw carriage road. Sitting within the hills of Idiato, the geographical landscape of this community makes it prone to landslide and erosion. Once it rains, the people are gripped with fear and anxiety due to several landslides that has occurred in the area. It's not safe anymore. You can see those houses. Nobody's still living there. All of them left their, their houses to, to another place. So my brother, we are begging on the federal government to intercede on this particular thing, to come to our aid immediately, please. For fear of being submerged someday, families whose houses are close to the highway have all abandoned their homes and relocated to safer places. Although a temporary diversion has been created for motorists, the greatest fear is that the entire community might be cut off from other parts of the state if nothing is done to salvage the situation. Anytime there is rain, we are all panicking. 
People cannot walk on the road again. No motor will pass, moving vehicles, machines. Most of the time, as many people have died because of this erosion. The last time it carried one woman and one man from Obiyo here down, and those people died. All the whole people when they get us there, no one lives in town again. They don't abandon this after. So live in the town with their children, no one is coming home because no place to stay. So I'm very happy that uh, as you people come, please, we are begging to help us. If not be so, before, before rainy season coming, you will not see any person. The Federal Road Maintenance Agency in Imo State says it has assessed the damage on the road and will commence repairs as soon as possible. With safety concerns, we had to block the road totally and create a detour through the community. We have visited the sites for on spot assessments. We have done an initial surveys and condition survey. We have uh, communicated our headquarters and actions have been taken. Our immediate uh, challenge is the rains. As soon as the rains subside, we already have our designs and our plan to intervene and fix the place within the dry period. However, the agency warns the community to stop illegal sand excavation and mining, believed to be major causes of the erosion. Communities should help protect and own road projects and roads. The remote cause, the remote cause of what we see there that deteriorated this further is mining activities. When people abuse the right of way of carriageways, flagrant abuse of the right of way. This is one of that is the, niche, the basic, the remote cause of what we have seen. And we we'll keep emphasizing on the need for people and communities to guide and protect the right of ways and not abuse it. When you engage in mining activities, illegal mining activities, you disrupt the road is already on a high embankment. Any disruption on the embankment by virtue of mining activities, you expose the successive layers of the embankment, water penetrates, and then the road is gone. The state government has also responded to the cry of the residents of Egbu community in Owerin North, local government area, following a flood incident that swept properties and displaced families. Visiting to commiserate with flood victims, a state delegation led by the Deputy Governor Placid Njoku is taking on a tour of affected areas with the aim of assessing damages to identify ways to tackle the menace. The conversation between the state delegation and leaders of the community continues at the palace where the traditional ruler suggests good drainage system with roads to mitigate the flood. We are grateful for all you've been doing for us. But I think my people complained during that construction when they diverted all water coming from, uh, from, our, from Emekuku, Awaka, to that place. The issue, Anorata, Anorata. But the issue was that it was diverted but where it was going to come out from at the point wasn't handled. So all water coming in there flows back. And this is what is causing this major disaster on this area. So it would be good if you look at it. Some of our youths had tried to go and block that road, block the drainage. They had begged them not to interfere interfere with what the government has done. They have even threatened to go and block the main road, that they can't be sleeping outside and cars so that people will hear their voices. We said, no, let them, we are law-abiding uh, families and, you know, town. So we don't want anything that will bring us in a, uh, a bad, 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 bad note with the government. So we are, the, the whole issue has been the diversion of water and there was no, we need a thorough drainage that will take it, take it off back to this junction, that, that it can flow. It's, an, it's, it's a what old waterway that has been in existence. And that's part of what we say, Olamiri River, that it started here. Olamiri River, where it started, is collection of this whole water that hits down to Olamiri for us to 
for it to flow. In response, the Deputy Governor assures of the state government's intervention, promising that all professional measures will be put in place to check flooding on the area. For us as a, as a government, we have a responsibility which we accept. We are here to be part of the solution to that problem. <laughs> we are aware, we are aware, and uh, the Commission of Works has hinted to me that even the contractors, he has divided the contractor, two contractors working on routes associated with Ebu, that they may even be here. But at this point in time, I don't think we are going to be talking about this is the immediate solution. What we are going to do on this occasion is to see. We take a full, if we need to form a committee, a technical committee to come here, maybe under the uh, Commissioner for Works, they come here, they review everything, and they give us a, a technical report on which we shall, we shall work. Whatever it is, there is some guiding principle as to what should be done to solve the problem in Abu. I think that's the way we will need to follow it comprehensively. Still in Imo State, communities hosting the Federal University of Technology Oweri staged a peaceful protest against the alleged institution's encroachment on their land. Obinze is one of the nine host communities to the Federal University of Technology Oweri. The latest protest by a group of women from the community is one of the several reactions to fallout of disagreement between the university and neighboring communities over land matters. <laughs> Clad in black attire, they take to the streets to protest the alleged forceful grabbing of the ancestral land by the university authority, claiming that due process was not followed. What have we done? Are we not, are we not like others? Huh? If you reach if you reach Mbano, you will see Allah. If you reach Mbise, you will see Allah. If you reach uh, Okolochi, so many, there is Allah. The vast of land they have taken. Let them leave our own land. We don't have any inheritance taken. It's only this one. They have taken enough. Please, please, we are begging them. The Obinze people have uh, uh, sacrificed enough. You see, Ami Baras is from Obinze. Um, uh, that estate, the first one, first two, first six, is also Obinze. And many other places they have taken. Uh, even those land stealers, we are begging them to leave our land for us. Our children have no other place to live. And we shall have children, children. We, uh, you see, this place that they are taking now, many of our children have built their bed, they have demolished everything. There's no way for us to live again. Are we going to fly? If you go to Fudo, there is many virgin land there. They have no other touch there. Why should they continue to disturb us here? Let them leave us alone. These allegations prompt a reaction from the university management. During a meeting with the state government and other stakeholders, the vice chancellor admits that land grabbing and encroachment by host communities are major challenges faced by the institution. She insists the land in question was officially allocated to the school by the federal government and that the host communities have long been compensated. We want peace. We want access to our land to continue our developmental strides. In the establishment of our medical school, school of pharmacy, and nursing and teaching hospital. All we want, sir, is peace and development. The involvement of the state government suggests that it is aware of the situation. Its intervention and continued dialogue may be pointers that both parties would come to an understanding sooner than expected. That's how we wrap up the show for this week. See you again same time next week. I am your me or Taigbi.